increasingly we're all coming to the same conclusion, and that conclusion is that we have built an economy uh, <clears throat> that is upside down. Uh, what should happen? The economy is a human institution. The economy should be built in a manner that it serves the people. But we've built an economy that essentially today requires for people to serve the economy. One of the things that we had was, of course, people felt vulnerable after the Great Depression. So when they walked by a poor person, they would think, there but for the grace of God go I. Um, and they felt a sense of common cause. They felt vulnerable. Um, and they also, we also, of course, had what Karl Marx called the specter of communism. There was a specter haunting Europe. What we had was radical ideas that made things like Keynesianism look moderate. And we, what we had was um, the ideas that pulled that window over of what we could speak about in politics. And there's this concept called the Overton window, which the right wing came up with. It's a window on the political spectrum from left to right. And that window sits right squarely on top of what's politically sellable today. What can a politician say today without losing an election? Relativement à la mobilisation, pour que les gens se mobilisent, il faut qu'ils sentent qu'ils peuvent faire une différence. Et je pense que pour beaucoup de gens en ce moment, euh, c'est ce qui les limite. Parce que on les pr on, on présente le système économique comme si c'était euh, quand, quand, quand un phénomène euh, économique arrive, comme si c'était un phénomène naturel, comme si on n'avait pas d'emprise dessus. Et comme vous l'avez si bien dit, pourtant, l'économie est une construction sociale. Because there's something unnatural about the nature of the economy today. And the only way we can come to terms with it and change it is by thinking way outside the box and looking at some really radical ideas about how to uh, re reorganize the, the economy. That's the Overton window. It was developed by a right-wing think tank, this concept, the Mackinac Institute. And what communism did was it pulled that window left so that somebody like Roosevelt could speak about 100% tax. And what we've seen since the 80s is that the right-wing movement has had a concerted campaign launched by Lewis Powell in 1971 that moved that window right. And that, you know, I can give you a few quotes that indicate the difference between how that movement has changed and starting with Bennett um, here in Canada in the 30s, Bennett said, I am for reform and in my mind reform means government intervention. It means government control and regulation. It means the end of laissez-faire. This was a conservative prime minister in Canada called for the end of laissez-faire. On peut la transformer. Donc, on a un changement à faire dans notre tête avant tout pour se mobiliser. On doit se décoloniser l'esprit. On est colonisé par la société de surconsommation qui implique aussi une surproduction et un surendettement. Donc, on a à réfléchir à toute la chaîne économique, se la réapproprier, mais réaliser qu'on a un impact dessus de multiples manières. Et un élément dont on parle relativement peu en termes de, de possibilités d'action euh, des, des mouvements syndicaux, aussi un paradoxe qui est euh, souvent mis de l'avant par, euh, par des groupes sociaux et, de, et, et autres, c'est toute la question de la financiarisation de l'économie. On vit dans une économie qui est de plus en plus financiarisée. Si on regarde comment est la part du PIB, en fait, qui est due à l'économie financière comparativement à l'économie réelle, sachant que l'économie réelle est celle, pourtant, qui crée les emplois, on réalise que le gain s'est principalement fait dans l'économie financière. <applaudissements>